today we are visiting Plitvica Lakes. It is the largest and the oldest national park in Croatia. Uh, it's got 16 lakes, I think, all like blue and green colours. Uh, we're going to do the Z1 Trail, which is a 18 kilometre walk, about 12 miles. It's probably going to take about six to eight hours with everything to do, so we've got the full day here. Tickets for 23 euros each, parking is 10 or 10 50 all day. Well, it's just gone 8 a.m. Um, and it's pretty busy already. We looked at the tickets for 9 and 10 o'clock and there was zero available, so that's a sign of how busy it is. I think they sell about 500 tickets an hour uh, for two entrances, so we've got, we thought we'll come early and try and beat the crowds, but I've got a feeling this is going to be absolutely packed today. Apparently there's 20 bears at any one time living in this national park. Um, you can see them if you're in the right areas occasionally, but it's very unlikely. So this is the route we're going to do. K1, entrance one is where we are. And we're going to do the full 18,300 metres, so 18.3k. No, 18 yeah. um, so we do get a boat at one point, I believe. Crossing of it might be that one there. Uh, uh, get a little boat tour, but yeah, so let's start that. So we should be done by longest time. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, about 4 o'clock-ish, which is good because this national park's open until 8 o'clock, or 7, the car park's open till 8. Here's all different hiking trails, so we're currently there, and we're going to take this red path all the way around, so we'll cover every part of the lakes. There is an actual app you can download for this national park, which I did yesterday, and I had a quick look through, it gives you details of all the bears, all the animals, a bit of information. It also gives you, if you want it, like a guide, uh, a navigational guide and if you come to a certain point there's a number and you can play that and it'll tell you about information for that particular zone which i think is a really good idea but we're literally in the car park just left the car park come from we're already at our first thing this is the big waterfall So this is the big waterfall and um, it's literally as soon as you come through the entrance but that's pretty impressive is that you look at this just the blue waters dropping down waterfalls everywhere that is fantastic all these signposts in case you're in any doubt of which way you're going a b c and k that is water boat three so this gives you the option just so you constantly know where you are and um, i was veers off the main tourist track a bit quite a bit further down where most people will continue walking around these first couple of lakes we're going to actually continue sort of further into the forest so we'll completely cover every lake system and every waterfall system in this national park today already coming to our second viewpoint like literally 10 minutes from the entrance and this is a lovely blue lake with loads of little waterfalls so far we're impressed um, we're just going down now to this little boardwalk which is sort of taking us in between two lakes there's little waterfalls going underneath it so this should be quite a nice thing to see you can't swim in any of these lakes which surprisingly we've been a national park but they really do look inviting to be honest it's the sort of place you can just imagine yourself jumping in especially today when it's supposed to be about 25 26 degrees i think this is the little boardwalk now you see it's already pretty full of people it's comfortable at the minute though i think once all the bus trips get here and that it's going to get a bit busier but oh it's going to be a long day today with this one anybody who knows leah knows that photography is pretty much everything i think it was out for an hour or two the other day and she managed to take 385 photos in an hour or two yeah that water is just absolutely pristine Unfortunately, um, today one of the paths we were hoping to do, which veers off to the right of us ahead, was takes you to the base of the big waterfall you've just seen is closed for renovation, so we can't quite get round there to see that, which is a pity, but I think we're going to be more than trekked to enough today just by, by this in the first sort of 10, 15 minutes. It's been beautiful so far, well worth the money. So I think, as I said before, it's 23 euros, um, but that covers you from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. if need be, so. We're going to make the most of it today. We brought a packed lunch, like proper little tourists today. So yeah, it just should be a nice day. It's already warm, so we're expecting it, but this one's happy. So this is unfortunately where our path 
we have to veer off this way rather than to the right, but never mind. Well, according to my pamphlet, these little fish here are actually black sea salmon. Well, it's not actually a pamphlet at all. It's not a pamphlet at all, it's the app. But yeah, apparently they are black sea salmon. I think the video is probably gonna do this justice with just how blue this water is, but I can't quite tell, but that looks well, you can't even. It's just amazing, to be fair. I'm going to be careful not to fall off this boardwalk, though. I was reading through the app last night, and it was just telling you about all the animals in this national park. There's wolves, um, three to five packs estimated to live here, all with about three to five wolves in them. Yeah, ahead here there's all these caves where the water's also running into. There's caves up here and you can't access them. These little boards here all give you information about the depth of these waterfalls uh, and the lakes. Just gonna have a quick little rant. I know this will do Leah's head in, but as good as smartphones are and cameras and for people to take memories and stuff, it does make places like this difficult because there's so many people, I mean, not the moment I'm proved wrong, but there's so many people stood in the middle of the path taking selfies or taking up all the space that you can't get past. You feel guilty whether you're walking past and disturbing the photo. It does get a bit annoying sometimes. Just finishing off what is now known as the lower lakes and the lower falls. There's a little bit of a walk now alongside the stream or the river and then we're going to find some more waterfalls. I said before, I think I said there's 16 in total lakes and waterfalls, so we're going to do all of those and then just, it's good, just going to enjoy the day because this is really, really spectacular. I mean, there's another thing in front of us now which is just lovely. Are you having a fun time, Leah? <laughs> I'm still squinting. Yeah, still squinting. <laughs> taking photos. This is what I've got to live with. You having a fun time? I am. It's absolutely beautiful. Definitely the clearest waters I think we've ever Without seen. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Gorgeous. Well worth it. Just picking up from where I left earlier um, about the animals, saying there's three to five known wolf packs that live here, with um, three to five in each pack. There's also about 20 bears, but they're, although they're not always in the national park, they do kind of walk through. There is a lot of common adders and there is the European Horn Viper which is one of the most poisonous snakes in Europe. Apparently it's quite, quite often in this area, especially this time of year when the sort of the basking in the sun after hibernation. All informative, just saying like we're the way to the big waterfall, toilets 10 minutes, we're following Kate and we're going to pick up a boat at some point because we need to cross the lake to get to the other side of one of these islands. About an hour into the water now, and we've just come to this little tourist area where there's bar, restaurants, toilets, seating areas. This is where you can get some of the boats, some of the other paths you need the boats to get to different areas. We're going around the lake. So Path K, which we're following, is now going round in like an arc around the lake for another hour or so, and then we'll get a little boat to cross to another island where we'll continue the road, road continue the path even. But yeah, so far so good. I've got a feeling it might quieten down a bit on this path as well. So it's off the main one a little. This is the biggest path in the national park. Leah's loving it. Aren't you, Leah? Oh, yeah. It's good. Coming into view is one of the little tourist boats where these are included in your ticket. They get you from point to point, island to island. I don't think this video is going to actually show the blueness of this water, but it's like it's like being in like the seaside where it's just so white and then goes to a deep blue. Leah's just kind of in awe of it, but to be fair, this is really, really spectacular. We weren't quite sure what to expect. We knew it would be good, but we didn't realise like it would be this good, and we were only like an hour or so into the walk. 
just seen a lizard, but um, I don't know if we've got any footage of it, like a big green lizard, so that's nice. Um, it'd be nice to see a snake. I've never seen a snake in the wild. As Lee has just so kindly reminded me, I would shit myself if I saw a big snake, but as long as it's at a distance and I can take a photo or video from it, I'll try and sort of do that because they can be out, but if it jump comes to now, I'll just slap it on the head. We've been walking through this like woodland for about 45 minutes now um, in the shade, but not a lot to see to be fair. You can just catch like glimpses of the lakes here and there. I think it might be a common theme now we've sort of got such a big walk to do. There is a couple more lakes coming up. We're just trying to find somewhere in the sun to have our pack up. And you know, Leah actually made my dinner for me today, which is unbelievable, so thanks Leah, much appreciated. Just coming to another waterfall now actually, we've been walking for a good hour um, just alongside the, the lake as you can see now. There's a waterfall ahead and there's a little boat stop, I don't think it's ours, and um, we get one a bit further down, but there's at least five or six boats, I just actually see one behind me on the lake now, at least five or six boats floating around transporting tourists here, there and everywhere. The lazy ones obviously, not the ones like us who are walking the full 18k because that's just us, the home hikers you see quite an unexpected waterfall this one we didn't didn't really know on the map they didn't mark it as a waterfall or anything but yeah it's an impressive one to be fair you can get right to the base of it too little dicky attenborough down there again look <laughs> there's another absolutely huge waterfall system just opposite us here there's a smaller one there and then just over there you'll see the one through there and um, we're going to walk around to get that to a viewpoint, but we didn't expect this, so it's just a gift that keeps on giving. There's a lot of uphills on this bit of the trail, um, so it's probably not accessible for everybody. You can see by the amount of steps, and it's quite slippy underfoot to be fair, but if you can do it, I would recommend doing this. How about that for a viewpoint? Another set of lakes. I've seen this bit before on YouTube where you can walk along the boardwalk along that way. This is just beautiful. See the little board rock down there with the people on it, which is where we're going to end up, I believe, at some point. How good does that sound? But what an area this is, it's just well well defined marked footpaths, um, all leading you around into this circular road. Everything's kind of navigating you really, you can't get lost. We're going to this big going to this big waterfall we've seen at the moment. There's a viewpoint just coming up which looks real spectacular. So this viewpoint here is sort of showing you the, the blue lakes and all these other little areas. A quick update on the nature front. Um, we've barely seen any animals besides fish. A uh, <laughs> couple of few fish, couple of chaffinches, couple, loads of dogs, and we've seen a couple of like blue, big blue dragonflies, crane damselflies. That's what they call aren't they? But yeah, we've seen a couple of them, but yeah, not, not a lot in like the terms of snakes and newts and bears and wolves and lynxes were, as, well, it wasn't promised, but you know, what we kind of thought we may see. Just have to look at this little animal in front of me instead. <laughs> see, that's just proven my point exactly. Now that's a beauty. That is just spectacular at the highest point. Attenborough doing what she does best over there. Photos. This is a very unique place. Like we're just looking across the bay, the bay area, and there's like areas all over. I'll show you in a second where it's just like just coming out of holes in the mountain. I mean, you appreciate you probably can't see it well with the light, but. Just like little spouts coming out of there. Every, these are all over the place, all over the national park we've seen so far. We're on the lower boardwalk now, which we saw from earlier on higher up. Um, few people, but to be honest, it's really very comfortable. There's not all that many people here. Everywhere's sort of comfy. The little waterfall just popping out down there. See it. There's a couple of them here. Yeah, yeah. Well, they'd see it very well. It's moving though. There it is, just in the middle there. Just 
just got a quick animal update. We've just seen, well, three snakes. We've, uh, we're just walking past like a little stream and in the reeds, there's a couple of people taking some pictures. We thought, oh, what is it? So like a little black snake curled up. And then on closer inspection, there was another one and then one just moving a little further up. So we've seen three. I'm not sure what quality it was or what sort of uh, breed of snake they are, but I'll try and sort of find that out and put that information in for you along with the images. Another waterfall here. I got excitable about my snakes, you see. I didn't react so badly as I thought I would, probably because it was a bit further away, but this looks like a really impressive waterfall too. We're at the bottom of this big waterfall now, um, there's a bit of a queue for me because I think it's people like taking selfies and bits and pieces like that, but this looks like it might possibly be the main one in the national park, so I can see why. As you can probably see behind, a bit of a queue there people sort of wait for the photos over here and then ahead it's just as bad you see there this is the only like pinch point we've really hit on the walk so far <laughs> yeah now that's pretty pretty spectacular isn't it as i was about to say before i got sort of distracted the weight wasn't so bad because it was made like <laughs> a lot better by watching this little Dalmatian behind me on his harness and he was insistent he was going to try and get in the water every time his mum turned his back he was trying to jump in the off the board rock into the water she got a right fight on her hands I can't I don't know if I've got him in video at any point if I have I'll put a picture in just the blueness of this water here with a duck in even more sort of waterfalls just appearing out of nowhere snake in the water oh, yeah. honestly this place is just truly spectacular I mean, I'm trying to get bits where there's not people but that's proving almost impossible here at the moment definitely like the most beautiful area of it so yeah it's a really really beautiful area this bit must be like the main one of the main bits to see because it's got really really busy at this point um, so you keep it in the odd little pinch point, which you can see why, I mean the waters are absolutely fantastically blue, waterfalls everywhere. I've just done lots of new fear, and um, we were saying about how inviting these waters would be to sort of swim in, and what did I see? A snake swimming across the water, so you'll have just seen that clip, so yeah that's put me off ever going in here. Coming now to one of the little ferry points, which I said before is all included in your entry ticket. So if we decide to get this, we can go to where we was earlier at the little picnic area. Saves about an hour walking. Uh, we're just going to sort of see what time it's due and see if it's worth us sort of waiting or whether we just walk around the side of the lake, which probably going to favour. Um, it just depends on how far it's going to be because it's still quite a way to go. So this route was supposed to be 11 miles, 11 and a half miles ish. So we've probably done a good date and nine of them now they said by now. We've been going five hours, um, even two miles an hour is like ten miles, so I think we'll be we'll be pretty much near the end now anyhow. We're finishing up now at Plitvitsa Lakes. Um, been a fantastic day. Been here just under six hours. Um, done the scenic, the longest route here. Just under, just over 11 miles. Been absolutely great today. So we're just making our way back to wherever the car park is now. Um, just over there, I think we'll have a little look past this reception and restaurant. <laughs> 